Hello and welcome back to another Maintenance Monday. I am so grateful to be here with you again. I do not take it lightly that I get to share the gospel, frankly, with the world and that you would tune in every week. So I'm so grateful for that. And we're still on the topic want driving wants and we learned about hannah's want from the societal pressures that she faced driving her to depression ultimately she wasn't able she was at the house of the lord wasn't able to worship she was sitting around uh with her family wasn't able to eat or fellowship but eventually it drove her to the altar and she prayed and and she surrendered that thing unto the father and he blessed her we saw saul's want and his want was a little bit different. His want was to preserve what he had, right? And, and what he desired to have even more so. So his want had been preserved or, or was, to be, was to preserve his status and his image, right? We realized that clout meant something to, to uh, Saul. And so he wanted that. And so now we're going to talk about another want. And this want is more directed into ministry because I find that oftentimes we think that we have a want and maybe it's disguised a little bit because it's about ministry and you don't feel like it's wrong. But I want you to know that we should just set our affections on things above, not on things on this earth. Colossians 3 and 2, set your affections on things above not on things of this earth. And so I'm so excited to share with you one more beautiful day. I want to say this to you. Want reveals something. Want reveals something. When we want for stuff, it reveals that maybe there's a distrust in the in the, our father shepherding us, right? Because we, we, we talked about this already. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So if I'm wanting for something, when I have a shepherd, then it must be that I lack trust in a certain area about my father's shepherding, right? And want does something else, which is a real doozy. Well, they both are, but I hate this one. Want reveals to the devil what he can use to dangle in front of you to make you compromise or even suggest to you that maybe I should go over here to get what I want. Right. Even if it's outside of the will of the father, even if it requires rebellion, which it will, if it's outside of the will of the father. So I want us to be mindful that those are two things that we don't want. We we not we got to trust the Lord with all of our heart and not lean to our own understanding. And so if that's a thing, you got to make sure. Nope, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want because the Lord is my shepherd. I don't have any wants because I know he's taking care of me. I know whatever I'm facing, he's going to see me through it. Right. Because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So don't let once come and cause you to mistrust your father. And don't let once come and give the enemy an inside look on what he could use to draw you away or even make you consider compromising. So today we're going to go to Acts chapter 8. And like I said, this one's going to be more geared towards um, even wants in ministry. Verse 9, it says, but there was a certain man called Simon which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself, giving out that himself was some great one, right? So we got this man, his name is Simon, and he used to, he did sorcery in this area and he bewitched the people. Well, what does it mean to bewitch, right? It means to, by manipulation, influence, control, people right and so he was able to do that using sorcery some may may call it um magic right something enchanting then but watch this it says he used sorcery and bewitched the people so he controlled the people right and uh giving himself that he was something great verse 10 says to whom they all gave heed because you got to pay attention to this now to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of of God. So look at this. He he used his sorcery and it made him look like he was so great that people paid careful attention to him. They listened to him. And it's not me. Look what the Bible says. They they considered him a great man of the power with the power of God. This man is the great power of God. So he used sorcery and it made people think that that power was of God. I mean, come on, think about it. He, he was able to use an invisible force, an invisible power. Nobody can see it, but it's working. Something's happening. And he was able to use that to cause people to pay attention to him, to listen to him, right? And then 
This man is the great power of God. Remember that. Look how they look at him. This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. And to him they had regard. That's the word I want you to remember. They had regard for him. What is regard? Respect, honor, value. But watch this. They had, they regard him high esteem. They think highly of him. So, and to him they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. So now that we know that, watch this. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. So here comes Philip preaching salvation, right? Preaching the, preaching the gospel, the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs were done. So now we're in the church. Now this is the exciting part, right? Think about this. So here we've got, we've got uh, um, Simon. He used to bewitch the people, right? They held him in high esteem. They thought very highly of him. They said, this man is the power of God. You know, they paid very close attention to him. And then um, Philip shows up. And Philip is preaching the kingdom of God. Philip is preaching Jesus Christ. And people hear it, they believe it, and they're baptized, both men and women. But not only the people, but those same people that he bewitched. Now those people, now he has switched places and he's with those people. Now he is looking at Philip like, wow. Now he's in amazement. Now he is wondering. Look what the Bible says. Then himself believed also and when he was baptized he continued with philip so he stayed with philip so he was baptized and he stayed with philip and wondered so he was in amazement beholding the miracles and signs which were done watch this 14 now when the apostles which were at jerusalem heard that samaria had received the word of god so this is where they are right this is where simon and philip are they heard that samaria had received the word of god they sent unto them peter and john 15, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So here comes Peter and John. Are you seeing this picture? I'm hoping I'm painting this well. Here comes Peter and John. They're praying for them that they may receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. So they don't have the Holy Ghost yet. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They believed the word that Philip preached, but they hadn't yet received the Holy Ghost. But Peter and John are praying and they're coming that these people might receive the Holy Ghost. Verse 17. Then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. This is so good to me. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to contain myself. This is so good to me. Then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Verse 18. Now remember, Simon, just like all of these other people, heard Philip preach. He believed just like all of these other people. He was baptized just like all of these other people. He was, was in such amazement that he stayed with Philip. Verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on, I'm sorry. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Now, I want you to see yourself in the church. Glory to God, I get no help. I want you to see yourself in the church. You came, you believed, you were amazed, but then you saw something that you could benefit from. Look what Simon says. He says, he, he offered them money. Watch this 19 saying, give me also this power. You trying to buy the power, right? He says, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Well, the first thing we got to make sure we always pay attention to in ministry. When it becomes about you, question it. When it becomes about who I lay hands on, right, you willing to buy it because he understands, watch this, what did he have before? Regard. They regarded him before. He used sorcery once before. He used invisible powers once before to draw people unto himself, to cause people to honor him, to respect him, right? To cause people to hold him in high esteem. He used that before when he was operating in sorcery. Now he sees, wait a minute, I believe this thing, but I can use this too to get that same honor 
and, and reverence, frankly, right? That same regard that I once got. People will pay attention to what I'm saying. And I'm just going to say this real quick. Think about ministry. It is one of the only places that a person can go and go from the pool, from the, from the back door to the pulpit and people stand when, 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 when you walk into the room, people take heed to what you're saying. They'll do all of that because the power that's on the inside of you, who wouldn't want that influence? Better read the Bible. Now, I'm going to just, just a side note, don't be quick to be a teacher because you're going to be judged greatly. Better read the Bible now, saints. Now, don't go, hey, I'm trying to help because you're going to be judged for that. You're going to be judged. You were a teacher. You better teach right. Blood is on your hands. I digress, right? So he says, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Verse 20. Watch this. You got to have men and women of God around you. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Be careful of these people that got you thinking that your money can purchase the Holy Ghost. You cannot purchase the Holy Ghost. If you could purchase the Holy Ghost, people would have been done it. But it's so many people with rich and poor that are still trying to figure out how can I live a holy life in this earth? You need the Holy Ghost. It cannot be purchased. But watch this, 21, thou has neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Your heart is not right in the sight of God. That's why you got to have men and women around you, people that are going to say something ain't right, right? And you got to be willing to accept it. I know we live in a real, real hypersensitive society, so now, you know, men and women of God got to walk on their tiptoes to really tell you something. You know, they're walking on eggshells, but Peter just said, your heart is not right. He said, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. You want a power. Look at this. Simon was in a place he could have received the Holy Ghost, but he was so busy with a want for honor, with a want for respect. He was so busy wanting something that he was in a place that he could have got the Holy Ghost. But because he was in want, he missed the Holy Ghost. Come on. Remember, Hannah was in want, so she couldn't even worship. Come on, remember, Saul was in one. He, 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 the Holy Ghost, the, the, um, the power of God fell on him. He began to prophesy, but then he left and was still arrogant. You guys see what one does, what have you in the place that you're supposed to be in, doing what you're supposed to do, but something ain't going right, and you want something different. And because you want something different, you can't even receive what God is trying to give you, what he is available to give you. Other people received the Holy Ghost. Why didn't Simon? Because his heart wasn't right in the sight of God. Why wasn't his heart right? Because he was wanting what he had on this side. I want you to consider something. I want you to consider that when you have a want, it may be revealing some unsurrendered areas of your life that are rising back up and repackaging themselves as if it's about the Lord. Right. He says, let me lay hands on them so that they will receive the Holy Ghost. Now, if you're not listening carefully, you would think he has a mind for people to get the Holy Ghost. But pay attention to the eye. He was willing to buy this gift so that he could lay hands on people and they could receive the Holy Ghost. See, ministry can be tricky. You may think that you're doing it all for God, but are you sure there's not something that you want there? Isn't that something? Be, yeah, I'm talking to you pastors. I'm talking to everybody, right? Be careful that you don't allow a want in a want. To re reintroduce itself, right? Repackage as if it's about ministry, but really this is about something you want. You want control. You want influence. You want honor. You want people to look at you a certain way. Come on, I know about it. I sang in the world and I sang on this side. And so it's something different when you sing on this side. Because on this side, it's not about all of your tricks and turns. Forget what you heard. Forget what you listened to. On this side, it's not about how many high, high notes you can hit. On this side, it's not about your vocal acrobatics. On on this side is do people change when you open your mouth? Do they feel the Holy Ghost when you sing? And God cannot put his spirit and his anointing on something that he can't trust the heart of it. Amen. So we got to be so careful even in ministry that we make sure it's not something that we want. And lastly, this is what gets me saints. Verse 22, Peter says, repent therefore of this thy wickedness. And pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. 
Then answered Simon and said, pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. This is what I found interesting. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Watch this. So here Simon was. He said, I want it. Peter said, your heart is not right in the sight of the Lord. Then Peter turned and turned to him and said, repent, repent. I, I, I perceive that the, the, that you are in the bond of iniquity, right? You iniquity saints, iniquity. What am I saying? He told him to repent, but did he repent? No, he actually prayed for Peter, asked Peter to pray for him that the things that he says doesn't come upon him. Because when you are in want, you will not humble yourself. When we are in want, we will not humble ourselves to God. Hear me. Want will cause you to walk so arrogantly that you, even though he did believe, he heard the word, he believed, and he was baptized, but couldn't be filled with the Holy Ghost because he was in want. And want had him walking around so arrogantly that he wouldn't even repent, but want you to pray that something doesn't happen to him. So today, I just want you to be encouraged. I want you to be strengthened, but I want you to search your heart and ask yourself, is what I'm doing right now really for my father or is it for me? Is it for you, Lord, or is it for me? Because it's in your heart, but ask yourself, is what's in my heart my want or God's want? What's in my heart, right? What's in your heart? So where did want drive him? It drove him to hear the word. It drove him to stick with the apostles. But it brought him to a screeching halt when it caused him to bring himself humble under the mighty hand of God. Want will not allow you to humble yourselves. I love you. I challenge you today to search your heart as always and say, is there something I want? And does that want draw me closer to God? And I mean, even in the things you do, I'm talking about when you go feed the homeless, right? I don't have a problem with people videoing the homeless. I don't have a problem with people videoing when they go and feed the hungry. But do you always have to video it? Do you always have to tell the world that you put a shirt on somebody's back who didn't have one? Is it about God or is it about you being highly esteemed in the eyes of others? Whether you're preaching in the pulpit or on the street ask yourself what it's about. I love you so much. I, have you, I hope you have a beautiful day. And I hope most of all that you have a pure day. Be pure. I love you guys. Before I go, I want to share something with you. This is someone that I love dearly. My mother, my sister, my friend. She has been so many things. My confidant. She's been so many things to me. And this book is powerful. It actually transformed our situation with her. And I look forward to one day being able to share that with you. But the power of prayer, believing for a transformed life. You can um, look it up on Amazon. You can purchase it right off of Amazon. So you go look. Melinda Jones Cummings, my baby. Y'all support her because I love her. And she walks worthy of the work that she is doing. I know it to be powerful. Go get the book, The Power of Prayer, Believing for a Transformed Life. Bye, guys. Be pure. Hey, you still there? Good. Here's a sneak peek of our first episode of One Thought with I'm, RJ. I'm still kind of guy. I'm just not poking you. I'm not sticking and moving you. Understand what I'm saying? They probably want you to get married so their husband stop looking at you. you get and so I have to fast. I have to pray. I, I spent my time mostly by myself. What is dating? Testing ground. Okay. Are you interested? Do you want to marry her? Regardless of whatever. Because I don't, I don't, I'm not dating you thinking about marriage. Just going out and peace. You know, the, the Pentecostal pimps and players from the Himalayas and the Mac. That's why they begin to date you because they are looking for marriage. But if God does not show you, then it is best for him to stand still. If he's still thick, he is still true. If somebody wants to be part of your life, they'll do the you want to do. Do the law? I want to know. Wow. <laughs> Real men know how to honor the woman of God.
I have to maintain my holiness. I ain't gonna have no late night conversation here, no foolishness talk coming out of your mouth. No. I want to learn that, you know, she we're out, she's covered. No, she was a beautiful woman. She put a hand on my hand. I said, the blood of Jesus. And a man must know how to manage his surroundings first. I've never had. Clean if you can't manage something, it will manage you. Ooh. I just want a down earth chick. If I can say, can I say chick?